Hi there, it's Matthew from Matthew North Music again. Today we're going to do a little repair video on something that isn't high-end by any means, but very functional. This is a Fender Frontman 15G. This combo belongs to the son of a work colleague of mine who said that he was having trouble with the overdrive channel on this amp. So we're going to pop it on the table and we're going to have a little look. It's a very basic amp. It's got two channels, a clean channel and an overdrive channel and it's also got an auxiliary input. Now this is an ideal little amp just as a practice amp or tune-up amp backstage. I actually used one of these myself for many years as a tune-up amp and I even did some recording with it. Although the version I had had an effects pot here which had a, a few effects like reverb and echo and tremolo and the tremolo was actually very good. Okay, I haven't got this set up very well so it's all a bit um, haphazard but anyway, amp switched on and I've got the clean channel working. <laughs> And that sounds rather nice. Let's stick the overdrive channel on. And it does seem to be working. This little amplifier on the face of it does appear to work. But what I will do is, because it has been used quite a bit, I'm going to take it out the case, we'll have a little look inside, and I'm going to clean all the pots and just check everything inside before I give it back to its owner. Right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six screws on the back. I'm going to use this to take them out just because it saves a bit of time. Well, here then is the inside of the amp. You can see it's basically just one circuit board. And it looks like there's two screws here, which I will take out with a normal screwdriver. And then we've got the two screws here holding the handle on. So handle's off. And we can now take the amp out of the case. We'll just disconnect the speaker. Which you've got to be a little bit careful on because you do not want to break the tabs. Yeah, this is our preamp circuit. So when we had this fault, it was either, as I suspected, going to be one of these op amps. These are TLO72 op amps. And also you've got a load of extra bits here. So here it says reverb. So this was designed to work, have an optional spring reverb. So if you have one of these amps, if you, I'm sure if you populated all these components here, you may need to add a pot or a switch or something. And uh, in fact, there it is there. There's the reverb switch and things there. And the pot for the reverb is here. So in fact, there's even a hole at cut. I don't know if you can see that. There's even a hole cut in the chassis. So if you wanted to modify this amp and turn it into a reverb version, if you can get a schematic and know the value of the components, you just put those components in there, put the components in there, whack in a pot, and uh, yeah, you've got a reverb modified version of this amp. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is now I've got this open, I'm going to get some contact cleaner and I'm going to spray all the pots and that switch because that's the only thing really that, that can go wrong. I might even, as I've got it out, yeah, as I've got it out, I might even just take the board out and I'm just going to look for any dry joints on the other side of the board that could become intermittent. I think I've talked about these before in the past, but these are really useful. These are like plastic socket sets, and they're ideal for taking anything off amplifier chassis or pedals or anything else, because they won't actually scratch the, scratch the board. There's a screw here that needs to come out that keeps the phonos in place for the line input. It's interesting, I've always wondered how many people actually use these line inputs on guitar amplifiers for, you know, they were originally designed for your sort of cassette Walkman or portable CD player, then as time goes on, people used, um, you know, their phones or whatever, but I suspect most people have those sort of devices plugged into other, other forms of amplification. Okay, you've got these two screws here to come out. Yep, 
You probably can't see it very well, but around about this section of the board here, there are a couple of solder joints that don't look great. They look like they've gone cold. So I might reflow around here. Um, the rest of it all looks pretty good. As I said, it's just around here that it needs reflowing. I may also just reflow the, the switch just to be sure, just to be sure. Well, I've reflowed some of the joints here and I've also cleaned all the pots with some pot cleaner, a little bit of pot cleaner residue on there. I'll just wipe that off in a second. Um, but yeah, it all seems pretty good. So I'm gonna whack all this back together now and we'll see how we get on. Just before then I put the knobs on, I'm just giving it a final test. So this is clean channel. That sounds pretty good. And I'll stick in the distortion channel. Whack the gain right up full. as well i think that amp's good to go now so i'm going to give that back to uh, to its owner and see how he gets on or rather how his son gets on well i hope you enjoyed this little video i think these little amps are great they're solid state but they're also very solidly built there's a good weight to them i've had one of these myself for many years which has lived in the living room and i only recently got rid of it after i built the fender champ clone because it sits in the same space in my flat but these are great little amps and there's very little to go wrong with these. Even if there had been something more major, it wouldn't be difficult just to swap out the odd part and get it going again. So I would say if you're looking for a good cheap practice amp, these small Fender combos are definitely worth considering. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.